Come on in. Welcome to Addled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about Survivor's most iconic finale episodes. The finale. It's the culmination of the season you've been watching up to this point. The season's winner is crowned. Maybe a favorite comes up just short. Legends are made and million dollar checks are handed out. Survivor has had more good finales than not, and even underwhelming seasons can really come together in the last act. I mean, it is one of the fundamentals of storytelling, you know, sticking the landing. For me, five Survivor finales stand out as the most iconic ever, representing a cross-section of eras and even season quality. These are the finales that stuck with fans forever. It was hard to narrow it down to five, so probably one or two of your favorites didn't make it in, but I tried to be as objective as possible here. Nevertheless, some tough cuts were made. At the start of this season, I looked at Survivor's most iconic premieres. Now let's take a look at the most iconic finales in Survivor history. At number five is the finale of Survivor, Ghost Island. I know, I know. This isn't a well-regarded season, but Ghost Island's shocking tie vote between Wendell and Dom earns this finale a spot on this list all its own. This finale completely retextualized the entire season. Most of Ghost Island is an inevitable frog march to an expected Wendell or Dom victory, as Navidi Navidi strongs the Malolos out of the game, only turning the cannons on the Navidi power players when it's too late. The writing was on the wall before, but once Kellen goes, the only players with any win equity at all are Wendell and Dom, and the only question left in the season is which of the two of them will win the crown. The answer is, well, both at first. Few things on Survivor have shocked audiences as much as Jeff announcing he'll be reading the final tribal votes live on location something he hadn't done since season one, with the final vote a tie, five for Wendell and five for Dom, the season's entire narrative suddenly clicks into place, and all of the time spent building these two up as twin powerhouse forces in the game, at the expense of screen time for everyone else, suddenly made perfect sense. Ghost Island's unprecedented tie vote proved that Survivor still had new ground to trod deep into the 30s, as two guys who both deserved to win tied in a truly jaw-dropping moment, and Laurel was demoted from finalist to juror and cast the winning vote for Wendell. Finally, we got to see Laurel's big move she was talking about all season. It just happened to be her moving from her finalist seat to the voting booth. At number four is the finale of Survivor, David vs. Goliath. This is one of the funniest episodes of Survivor of all time, and it's all thanks to the episode's MVP, Angelina Zlatter. And there's a reason they brought this bad boy back as a tribe captain in Survivor 45. Angelina's insistence that she nearly died climbing a 50-foot ladder to retrieve an idol when this thing has one, two, three... Only eight rungs is some of the most unintentionally hilarious stuff I've ever seen on this or any show. As they were all season, the stars of the finale truly are Angelina and Mike White, with Angelina's antics dialed up to 11, particularly her insistence that she trick Allison into playing a fake idol only to embarrass her. There was no strategic value here. Plus Mike's drunken scrambling for the idol clue on the final six reward. Wine glass in hand is the ultimate mood. Add on to that an incredible three immunity run from underdog Nick, who was super rootable, and I cannot stress this enough, only at the time, not now, and you've got a finale full of heart, humor, an incredible and unique group of finalists, and a conclusion that paid off the season's theme big time, as David ultimately slew Goliath. The only thing that could have made it better is if the jury actually got this vote right. Clearly the most deserving person did not win this season. I mean, Angelina gave up rice for the tribe, then climbed a 50 foot ladder to retrieve an idol, all without a jacket. 
At number three is the finale of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Unsurprisingly, the greatest season of reality TV also has an incredible finale. This episode comes out of the gate hard. Colby's final five elimination is expected, but for my money still remains one of the most poignant ever. The entire season went out of its way to dunk on him and portray him as this over the hill cowboy who simply can't compete anymore. Which is even funnier when you consider that Colby was only 35 when this season filmed. But his final confessional, where he says he'll never quit fighting in the game, is a genuinely moving send off to a legend. And the decision to hold on that pregnant pause as Colby gets choked up on the weight of his own words is one of the most inspired editing moments ever on the show. As if that wasn't enough, Sandra and Russell are both firing on all cylinders here. After two seasons of back-to-back 39-day -back runs on Survivor, Russell has fully descended into insanity and delusion. Practically every other word out of his mouth is about how easy Sandra will be to beat. And Sandra's dropped whatever tiny pretense she has of kowtowing to Russell. She even brings his story full circle, from burning Jason's socks at the start of Samoa, to her burning his hat before they head to Final Tribal. It was an exciting finale where it truly felt like any non-Russell player could pull out the win. Final Tribal was passionate, and fans still debate to this day if Sandra or Parvati should have won. But for me, a worthy winner was crowned with the hero-laden jury rejecting Russell's mean-spirited gameplay for the second time, simultaneously punishing Parvati for enabling it. Look, you can actually pinpoint the moment his heart breaks in half. And... here. At number two is the finale of Survivor Palau. Survivors rarely examined the real sorts of complex emotions and tumultuous highs and lows that come when you make real friends in a game designed around betrayal. But they did just that with Tom, Katie, and Ian. A trio that dominated the game top to bottom. By the time the finale rolls around, Ian is torn by his earlier promise to go to the end with Tom, by far the best competitor in the game. He gets caught up in subtle misstatements about his twin loyalties regarding his endgame plans with Tom and Katie. I think watching Ian reckon with the emotional toll the game is taking on him is endlessly fascinating, and much of the finale revolves around that. It almost seems like he feels that he's truly lost sight of his morals and his character while playing the game, that part of his very soul has been corroded. Like I didn't come out here to play the villain. I didn't come out here to, like, be this, like, be the, uh, the backstab ready. Like, especially those two, like. Obviously, the 12 hour long endurance challenge between Tom and Ian is the highlight of the episode. And the shocking decision by Ian to voluntarily step down so that Tom can take Katie to the end over him, rejecting the money in exchange for his dignity, was the ultimate water cooler moment. It holds a mirror up to the audience. What is your integrity worth? Ian's such a fascinating character in Survivor lore to me because you have a guy whose brain knows what the right moves are, but his heart gets in the way. Now, the season is over the second Ian steps off the perch because no one in their right mind would ever vote for Katie to win over Tom. So I guess you could offer a tepid argument that this finale climaxes a little early, which if you ask this guy, that isn't so bad. The fact is, Survivor at its best can actually say something about the human condition, and the Palau finale has a lot to say. The other side of that is that Survivor at its best also includes Lisi falling on her face in a puzzle challenge. The duality of man. The most iconic finale in Survivor history is the finale of Survivor's original season, Survivor Borneo. The numbers don't lie. Over 50 million people tuned in to see which of the Toggy Four would win the game. Okay, I mean the finale of Australia isn't on this list and like 35 million people tuned into that, but that one is boring as shit. It's easy to forget that this final four was the alliance everyone at home hated, and Richard was the most objectionable player of them all. 
With the benefit of hindsight, Rich's game here is so fun to watch, especially here in the endgame. Conniving, egotistical, and ruthless, Rich was one of the few people this season to see the game of Survivor for what it is, a game. And the depth of his understanding of the game he was playing is on full force in this episode culminating in his throwing of the final three challenge, understanding that Kelly winning immunity was his only winning path, and by forcing her to be the bad guy and vote off Rudy, he was practically guaranteeing his win. As a side note, Jeff even offers them some orange slices to tempt them out of the challenge. Jeff, what is this? The new era? Of course, the centerpiece of this finale is the final tribal council, and it's shocking how much the show gets right on its first time. Much of the final tribal format went unchanged for over a decade and a half, proving that the show had a winning formula right out of the gate. But it's Sue's Snakes and Rats speech that vaulted this into legendary status. Two decades later, through a flood of imitators, no one's delivered a speech this biting and impassioned at final tribal ever again. In fact, in the realm of Survivor Stump speeches, the returns would be… rather diminishing. You've really got to appreciate the way the stars aligned on this whole thing. Speeches weren't even going to be a thing until Sue was asked by Mark Burnett what she intended to ask the final two. And Sue being Sue said she had nothing to ask them, only something to say. With that spark, Burnett immediately restructured Final Tribal Council to allow for speeches and statements. That a woman who frequently stumbled over her words in confessional and who couldn't spell almost to the point of comedy, like literally, how do you screw up Dirk? That she pulled off a speech so eloquent was pure TV magic. It's truly one of the most iconic episodes of television ever made, and Rich winning over Kelly cemented scores of reality competition copycats to come, which in turn inspired our current TV landscape full of reality lifestyle shows where everyone and their mother has a camera crew following them around. And yet no one ever did it better than these snakes, rats, and hawks. Got nothing else for ya. If you don't want to be a snake or a rat, just like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.